What's up, Packsters? To continue with the series on FPGAs, which are having a big moment right now, Upduino v1.0. So this is by Gnarly Gray, which is an interesting name, based on ICE40. Like always, FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. They are great because they make things faster, they process logic without having to go through a CPU, and they can run multiple processes in parallel. This one is an interesting color, this mustard yellow we don't see very often. Let's dive a little bit into the specs. So on the Lettuce Semiconductor page, they talk about the Arduino board. They sell it as basically an expansion upon the Arduino Nano and Pro Mini boards. And they describe it as a solution for IO expansion, data buffering, and low latency requirements. It takes low power and it has a lot of RAM. The cool thing about this board is that it's only $10. It runs on a Lattice Ultra Plus ICE40 FPGA, which is similar to the chip that's running in the tiny FPGA we mentioned before. Uh, the tiny FPGA BX uses an ICE40 LP8K. This one is sold as a Lattice ICE40 Ultra Plus FPGA. I'm not sure what the difference is there. It has 34 GPIO pins whew, on 0.1 inch spaced headers, SPI flash, RGB LED, 3.3 volts and 1.2 volt regulators. Plus it's totally open source and you can find it on GitHub. They have a 2.0 version, but I don't have that yet. So I'm just gonna tell you about the 1.0. That one has a micro USB, which looks a little bit more convenient. It also costs 16 bucks. So if you look at their GitHub, they have some cool programming files that will help you get started programming this with a Raspberry Pi, for example, which is pretty cool. Uh, plus you can download the schematic and layout files. There's a tar file with example RGB LED blink code and some excellent documentation. Now, one thing that interests me here is that they sell it as an expansion to the Arduino Nano or Arduino Pro Mini. And they say that it has 0.1 inch spaced headers in order to mesh well with those. Now I have an Arduino Pro Mini and I don't see, the pins don't seem to match up in any way that kind of makes sense to me. Uh, granted this is, you know, an ancient board and maybe there's different versions of it that would match up better, but um, any way that I sort of twist and turn this, they don't seem to sort of want to match up. And so I will leave it up to you, our viewers, to tell me what I'm doing wrong here. Because uh, I would love to try this. I think it sounds like a really cool way to integrate the FPGA and Arduino. Of course, Arduino themselves have now come out with the VDOR FPGA board, so it would be interesting to do a side-by-side -side comparison of how the two methods stack up. If you want to keep up to speed on this, check out Alistair's post about the coming of age of FPGAs for makers. Um, I think this is a really interesting topic, and we're only going to keep seeing more and more maker-focused FPGA boards. I've still got one or two tricks up my sleeve for this week, and let us know what you make with these. Happy hacking!